So a few folks have asked for kind of a walkthrough of the cockpit setup. So I figured I'd just do a quick walk through the gear on video. The computer's in a, it's a lab style case called a Banchetto 101. It's a B-A-N-C-H-E-T-T-O 101. I don't know if you can read that. They're pretty nice. I'm actually missing a fan setup that should be good, should go here. Haven't really needed it. Got uh, four drives, each of them striped on RAID for performance. Uh, we got, oh, I can't remember, I think it's 12 gigs of memory here. Core i7 Extreme CPU. Uh, upgraded last year to a GTX 580, just a single board. I was running dual boards before. I don't really think that's worth the effort anymore, but I might end up getting a second 580 to uh, drive another couple of monitors in the cockpit. Sound Blaster X5 card, all mounted to uh, EVGA X58. It's nothing particularly new about this setup. It's all uh, year two old gear, but it, it runs pretty well. It's a turbo cool 1200 whatever PC power and cooling power supply it drives everything. Never had any problems with it. Knock on wood. Put the surround audio. You can see much of that is a amplifier to drive the transducer that's mounted under the racing seat. So we'll move over there. Just follow the cables. It'll take us where we need to go. And this was all originally uh, set up. There were no cables visible, but this is uh, turns out to be the more the maintenance area. You can see the cables that end up being exposed just to keep things alive I tend to go through a lot of USB hubs for some reason it's really not a lot of stuff hooked up on each hub but got it all try to keep it tied up as much as possible and the computer seems pretty happy with it for the most part Everything tends to work. So getting over to the cockpit, I guess we'll uh, cover things from the top to the bottom. This is uh, Panasonic, I think it's an AE-1000, can't remember now. Again, not a new piece of equipment, but it does the job, 7,000 lumens or something like that. but. I have it sitting overhead. People recommend putting it on the ceiling, but I didn't really feel like drilling into the ceiling. It fills the screen pretty well. It does the job it needs to. Any lower than that and it's hitting my head and right this from this point and getting most of the fill on the screen. It's just on a stand that I don't remember where I bought, but it's got a couple of these things and they're pretty handy. It's a projector. Which is kind of funny. So the screen is a daylight. It's a D-A-L-I-T-E. Covered in, the frames covered in black felt. And I don't remember the model of the screen but it was nothing too fancy I think if I redid things today I would probably get a curved screen and try to work two projectors back in. I had two projectors originally but that became too much of a pain the uh, outer pods here kind of the more recent additions, we got a little map light that doesn't really work yet controls for flight sim that we'll do in another video these add some accessory happiness the frame that everything is mounted to is uh, made by a company called Nixim it's N-I-X-I-M, I don't know if you can see the label there in the cables 
can always message me if you want the story behind the frame, but it's a fantastic piece of work. It's beautifully made, black powder coated, the welder's strong, the faux carbon fiber, uh, I guess this is MDS, some kind of, I don't know, layered material, it's very, very strong. It's all ultra high quality. Fellow even uh, let me send a picture of my race team's logo. And put a decal on the front. It's all drilled. See the welds and it's adjustable hinges. That was my hand. Adjustable hinges all over the place so you can really customize this thing to your size and shape. You got a panel for mounting a stick shift if that's uh, which I had at one point. We actually got for sale on eBay right now. But uh, all kinds of adjustments and accessories. He's got a Hotas hands-on throttle and stick. It's kind of ends up being like two of these. I ended up going with my own setup. But uh, yeah, it took a really long time to get. The fellow was going through some trouble when he was making it, but it ended up being worth the wait. But I think this took about six months, seven months. And the guy's from the the UK. And it just took a while. The ECCI pedals. We'll get to those in a second. One of many surge protectors. Keep this beast running. We have a subwoofer over here. Surround audio. And the frame's set up to accommodate it pretty well. The metal plate down here on the floor is not part of the setup. It was something left over from previous experiment with other controls. So there's a Cobra seat. It's an actual car seat. Put in, a, I have a custom MDF adapter that gets the seat mounted to the frame. You can still use the fore aft adjustment and there's a transducer mounted to the bottom of that MDF piece. And that transducer is hooked up to the rear channel. Most racing games, flight games, throw all of the bassier, low frequency rumble strip or engine sounds to the back. So that ends up kind of working out for where the rumbles need to come from and getting the timing right. The uh, steering controls are uh, ECCI wheel, which I have the cover removed so I can access the stuff going on inside it. It's one of the best wheels I've ever used. It's the wheel and uh, pedal combo. You can see the pedals down here. It's hard to see in the light here, but it's all metal, all square tube construction, a lot like the frame. Those are, uh, see how thick the pedals are. They're no joke. They feel good to use. There's a uh, clutch brake and gas all feel exactly as a clutch brake and gas should. Brake has a load cell on it so that it actually compresses and tightens up at the end of its throw. The wheel is not a force feedback unit. It uses a fluid damper, which you can see here. It's a round thing with the heat sink on it. Heat sinks may or may not be necessary but it looks pretty but it's a pulley system and the way it works is some springs which you probably can't see in this lighting that load up and you can adjust the tension of the springs by changing the type of springs that are be used which is a five minute change up and the fluid damper works so that the more you're steering, the harder you're steering, the more it tightens up just automatically. So it, I find it actually is, has an overall more realistic feel than a force feedback. Everybody's different. A lot of people love force feedback. I kind of miss it sometimes. But I mounted a, kind of customized the wheel a little bit, and mounted a removable steering wheel adapter, and then I uh, got a you wouldn't believe it or not, this coil cable is almost impossible to find. I don't know the stuff they use in race cars. Probably find it at AutoZone nowadays or something, but when I was making this thing, that was 
one of the hardest parts to get a hold of out of everything else. So I had to just have that mounted up to the wheel. So the wheel's removable now. And it just locks in like you would expect. The dashboard is custom. It's using a whole bunch of component stuff from uh, JEGS for the switches, switch panels, and the Xenarc touchscreen, which sometimes is used. It's not being used right now. There's various things I could do with it, like display my desktop while I'm playing a game, or see comms or something. With I'll see what players are in a game or use it for getting data logging tire temps or something like that during a race not being used right now this is the Frex meter the old style they have a new one now this works pretty well most games with driver supports a little bit better than it used to be the auto meter cobalt gauge of the Frex box is driving We'll get to see that in action in a little bit. It's neat stuff when it works. It's kind of the rule with all this stuff. It's neat when it works. The switch panels are all driven uh, by a little interface board in the back. You can see the wiring. It's all straightforward. Just switch wiring, routed it around. It all feeds into this little black box that it, little project box I got. And in the inside is a tiny little board my board has wires that split off, they split off in this weird little matrix but it uh, allows you to just hook all these switches up to the computer and you get a few joystick axis and a whole bunch of switch points to assign to whatever you want in the game and so you have access to do things like knobs you have switches, you can start buttons or you know one-way switches, momentaries, or single throw, dual throw, however you want to set it up. It's a Leo Bodner, B-O-D-N-E-R, I think is a fellow's name. He makes great stuff. This is a Track IR head tracker. Follows the little infrared doohickey mounted on the headset there. That allows me to look around in the games where that's enabled. Pretty handy. It's one of the reasons I never went to a curved screen or rushed to it is because that works really well. We'll see that in action in a minute too. You might have noticed this little guy as we were panning around. This is a switch I added. S dual throw six pole or triple pole. I can't remember anyway craziest little switch I've seen so far but it have it going to the potentiometers on the pedals it's getting a little technical here not many people are going to care but uh, what it allows me to do is switch between a driving scenario or a flying scenario without having to change the pedals out which would be kind of a pain in this cockpit not to mention the ECCI pedals weigh about 30-40 pounds so when I throw those switches it moves the brake pedal axis to the clutch pedal and a clutch pedal axis to the brake pedal so those two things combined mean that the clutch axis or the clutch pedal and the gas pedal act as a single axis now it's no longer behaving like regular car pedals so that means I've got a left rudder and a right rudder pedal and the clutch pedal has almost the same resistance as the gas pedal, not quite, but close enough. I'll be honest, I've not missed ever actually having real rudder pedals in a flight sim, so this is working out pretty well. Neat little setup, probably cost about five bucks to make.
go slowly. 